This is Steve Kello. <laughs> My beloved professor. I am her beautiful, beautiful. This is James. <laughs> and this is Laurie. And we are going to have the joint artist talk today. And so I want to kind of start to talk about some of my works and shall we start it from yeah. maybe over here. So this guy, um, I named it Joy and it's made of bubble wrapping um, with things and I kind of consider the sound of popping the bubble wrap as the word instead of um, the thing physically. By the cell. Um, so for my show here, um, the thing is about being different and how being different sometimes empowers you and, and the other kind of becomes you all the same. So um, when a piece of bubble wrap, even it's a bubble wrap, when it's put in a um, gallery space and when it's painted, it looks, it, people are just so glad that we think that it's a piece of artwork and it will be really challenging for people to step on it. Even a lot of people just that we have that need to do it. So, but, um, so it becomes like when you step on it, it differentiates you from the crowd and you become special. You will enjoy the joy of the popping of the bubble. And by the bubble, there is a bagel that's really made of bagel. <laughs> um, and when you look very closely, you see a little piece of paper that's um, hanging inside it. It's the title of this work is called Social Structure Through the Eye of a Bagel. So inside a bagel, there's a triangle. In the middle of the triangle, er, it says normal in the square. And on the two sides of the little triangles, it says off. And on top of everything, it says genius. So when you are considered genius, yeah. your people approve of what you do and they think you are awesome. It's because you, you can do things that other people cannot and other people wouldn't do. But at the same time, when you do something that other people wouldn't do, it can also be something that marks you from the crowd and makes you different and be discriminated against. So and the situation always kind of inter exchange. So that's how I see the social power structure works. And across the bagel is this piece of cloth. It's called um, We're Not Alone. And people are invited to put them over here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you can like do that. So on top of this piece of cloth, it's a collage of other artists' work. So I get the inspiration when I saw Lady Gaga's big dress, and I was surprised at first, and then I think about it, and I'm like, wait a second, I've seen it before. It was um, another artist who's John White, he had done a performance art called My New Work and he was very neat um, stuff on him. The, and then I, my research ended up with a lot of um, different artists doing a theme of meat and it's just in the creative industry or in the art world a lot of times when you try to do something different because that's what everybody's going for, it makes you actually ended up in the same place and then the new become the oldest thing that everybody is going for. So however different you are, you're not alone. So that's why it's called not alone. And then there is a sculpture piece that is um, from far away you just see like a really old cardboard box that's standing on top of those paper cones that's really poorly made and only be held together with tape. And then when you go over and see the inside the box is that you are special with icing. And um, when you are special it's a dangerous position. You are, it, it can be something that's happy and celebratory 
and but at the same time you're kind of like standing on those tips and they can trip over and people want to attack you. Nice. Yeah, I've seen people who walk in and he wants to like <laughs> yeah. So that's so that's kind of something about the my show, yeah. And then the other pieces are kind of visually going into here. <laughs> so, yeah, any questions? <laughs> I wonder how you feel about having pieces now that are asking for the viewer to interact. Because you haven't done it that much before, right? So how do you feel? Do you think people got the invitation or were they afraid to interact with the pieces? I think that's the, the, the interesting thing about gathering. So when this piece is outside on the street, everybody's going to step in it. But because it's in the gallery space, nobody yeah. would as much. So I really like not putting the instruction or anything on there. So whoever like do it, it will be like more of a something that it's from yourself. Or just like, I'm not going to put aside about there's a piece of paper in the bagel. So only let people find out by themselves. So there's a surprise as well to it. And these two pieces you made, or did you make, you made the sculptures and you made prints of the sculptures? So yeah, that's the, actually that's the Apple commission and then I, and then I made a video of it. Okay. Yeah, I made one of the sculpture that's with an apple and a um, concrete cast cone, and it's called Apple cone, and then I do it digitally with multiple images. And then I make it for the And that's also a sculpture. Right? Yeah, I can see her as a sculpture, actually. But it exists for a while. What was important about making them 2D instead of showing them as? Yeah. The yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually, in my mind, I consider that as a sculpture to a desert photo of that sculpture because it's time sensitive. Yeah, and and then for not that much of the apples, but yeah, um, with food or anything that's perishable, it just makes you feel like when you ha do have the thing, you smell it and you see how it will change every day, but when they're in 2D form, it's freezed, but you always persist it as the work. As a documentary of war, and it kind of the image replays the war itself. So, do you have a document that you do over time and you know, take photos of it in several stages? Yeah, sometimes I do that. Because yeah. I think it really is interesting. You know? Yeah, yeah. I used to make candy stuff. Um, I put it in, a, like, I make a carpet out of candy, sort of, and then document how it got eaten up by bugs. <laughs> yeah. And then you have one more piece here that I had to stop showing because we couldn't keep the projector going for oh, the whole month. Yeah, yeah. But do you want to talk about that? Oh, it's, um, in that piece I was blowing a bubble out from the ring of a donut. <laughs> so I dip the donut into some soap water and blow a bubble out from there. And I just think that it's a funny piece. So, <laughs> you know, you know, every time it goes with it. Yep. Any other questions? I was kind of wondering um, the, the writing inside of the poems. It looks like maybe like a, uh, a wet brain or something. Um, yeah. It's the choice of the material in that instead of. Yeah, because um, I was actually working with Kate Eisen, that's what it is before, mm -hmm. and um, it's just, it, it just communicates with a, a certain sense of happiness by itself. You see this kind of writing on cakes, on cupcakes, on birthday cakes, but, um, but what it is, when it's in there, because how it never goes away and how crappy it is contested, 
it just makes you have a second thought about it that um, it's not a happy thing. So that's that's why I kind of chose it to have you. People usually get the idea and they think, okay, it's a happy thing, but you can always go to the other.